This video contains subject matter that may be offensive and disturbing to some people. If you are the type to require a warning throughout a video or show, let this message serve as your warning. This channel discusses the harsh reality of true crime. If this warning is not sufficient for you, consider a different genre and unsubscribe from my channel immediately. Yep, the robot. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Gotta do the robots every once in a while. Now, uh, Grady Judd had another uh, case uh, press conference he put on today. So, a couple of people sent that to me. So let me, uh, I gotta load that sucker up. Great Egypt. I'm gonna put it in the Adobe Premiere here. So like always, if somehow I get that weird crash, I don't know if it will because I reinstalled my graphics driver. But if it does, I'll be back on in three minutes. Ah, I see. So he didn't talk for a while. Okay. Looks like it's a little low. I'll make it louder for you guys. In a second. Okay. So what's going on, everybody? Yeah, it sucks. I, I feel bad about the membership thing. Sometimes I think, like... I mean, it, 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 here's the thing. is It doesn't really matter... You know, if, like if somehow, like right now during COVID, it doesn't work. You don't have to be one. I know that you're still here supporting my channel, but then you just, once we get through the COVID thing, I mean, it's kind of bad. I like, like uh, LM said the other day, I guess it is bad timing, you know, but it's been just, who knows when this COVID thing is going to even get better. I have no clue. You know, it's, uh, we just got to get shots in people's arms, everybody. Yeah, she was really, uh, yesterday she um, had really a lot of muscle aches and a fever. Uh, got up to like 100 degrees and then today she's totally normal. And that's what they tell you. The second shot seems to have more side effects for, most, for more people. My dad, the first shot, he felt absolutely nothing. And, you know, he's 80-something years old. He's a doctor. That's why he got his um, quicker. But uh, he... His second shot, you know, he had a little, you know, he just felt sick. And today he felt, you know, sick again, you know, more sick even with chills and everything. So now that's, he got it on Sunday. So that was Monday, Tuesday, hopefully tomorrow. They usually say 48 hours. Yeah, thanks, Stacey. Yeah. But it's weird how the second shot, it, I guess my brother said, yeah, because it kind of activates it even more, you know, like uh, your body kind of gets ready and all of a sudden, boom, it pump puts in all these antibodies or something. So, I mean, that's why you feel sick when you have the flu. It's not the actual virus itself that's making you feel sick. It's your body's response to the flu. And like I was saying before is 
Um, you guys got to realize that the flu, uh, it was almost completely nullified this year because people washed their hands, maintained their social distancing, and wore masks. That's what they do in, you know, um, like Seoul, South Korea, China, during the flu seasons, everybody's wearing masks. And it really makes it so there's almost, I mean, like literally very few cases of the flu. But that also shows you how absolutely spreadable and, uh, you know, that this coronavirus is. Because during that same time when people were wearing all of these masks, maintaining social distancing and washing their hands, the coronavirus is keep spreading even worse, you know, and it, it was slowed down with the masks and everything. That, that's the crazy part about it. It's like wildfire. Hey, thanks, Lee D. Yeah. Anyways, don't feel bad if you can't do the uh, the lowest tier that it's moving to in the channel membership. Uh, you know, you're still here watching the show, that kind of thing. Um, it's just something I'm doing for the future because it got to the point where, you know, everybody... I'm, I'm going to have um, actual things that are different, too, for the higher, the newer, higher tiers that are, that are going to be coming. There's going to be two different ones. So like, you'll get like shirts and hoodies and, you know, like sessions where we're just on there together trying to f work through a case. And then I'll even present it later and then they'll know it better than everybody else. Something like that. All right. But it got to the point where everybody was just clicking on the first one over and over again. And I need to, I'm really uh, kind of focused in on you know, doing the shows, putting work out, uh, information out about these cases, and also, you know, the really important thing that allows us to be making a difference, a big difference, not just covering the cases, is raising the funds, you know, to help support my channel, but at the same time, it is a massive help for uh, the charities and also the, um, I'm not sure what you call the, DNA, but it's going to be through a charity, but DNA, like identifinders, basically. We'll be using that. So there you go. Uh, so that's, that's it. <laughs> There's a community post. Um, it's going to either go, it's going to go away. I might extend it like an extra week or something into you know i'm just saying right now it doesn't seem like a lot of people have seen the post or something you know i don't know what's going on but still 187 people that are at the one you know the first tier yeah no they don't take 60 percent it's 30. they don't i don't know who said 60 but that's not but 30 is still pretty big you know. <clears throat> All right, so we're going to play the uh, the press conference today with Grady Judd. All right, so hold on a second. And then we'll get to these cases. Actually, I'll just do the middle monitor. It's bigger. coming through the sounds like it good morning everyone i'm joined today by the fire chief from polk county fire rescue uh oh they chief just weech <laughs> by the way just now as we're talking a new driver became available for my video card so i'm wondering if they sort of found that error hmm and also Joe Hallman, who is a deputy county commissioner and a former chief at the sheriff's office, is with us today. And we're going to talk about and kind of phase two of last week I was up here saying you can't police yourself or police the community until you first police yourself. And I told you about... Uh, I don't know who that is, Darlene. Who are you talking about? Hold on, let me just hold on a second. What are you referring to, Darlene? 
Who's... I don't even know who that is. Maybe you can explain that. I'll turn it back on in a minute, but I'm trying to figure out now what Darlene's saying. It has nothing to do with the, what's going on. Yeah, what, what is that? What is that channel? Just a... Like a... Variety channel? I mean, what are they saying? Well, it's, yeah, it's 30, though, not 40. Alley Cat. Uh, okay. How many, how many, um, how many channel members are there? I mean, what were they saying? I don't even know what... So if they're interviewing Chad, why would they bring my name up? Ah. See, what, what you just did right there, see, now <laughs> I don't know what happens. Yeah, everybody, go check it out if you want to, okay? I'm going to be doing a show tonight, though, okay? No, it's okay, Alley Cat. I'm just letting people know it's not that crazy like that. You mean the interviews I had with who? I didn't, I never interviewed Chad. I interviewed, um... The, the grandparents, remember? I didn't interview Chad. I don't know what that means. So anyways, let me, let me get to this. I, you just threw off the beginning of the show. One, I'm joined today by the fire chief from Polk County Fire Rescue. Thanks, Timothy Cecil. Uh, chief Weech, and also Joe Hallman, who is the deputy county commissioner and a former chief at the sheriff's office is with us today. And we're going to talk about an kind of phase two of last week I was up here saying you can't police yourself or police the community until you first police yourself. And I told you about a deputy and his misdeeds. Today we're going to give you like deja vu at the fire department. The fire department has the same exact attitude. You can't serve the community until you first serve and protect and police yourself. We received a call from Polk Fire Rescue that they thought there was some criminal conduct afoot as it relates to the uh, use of COVID-19 vaccinations. And here's how it started. Battalion Chief Gorakov, Eugene Gorakov, was going through paperwork from paramedic Joshua Cologne. And he was going through this paperwork because Joshua was assigned doses of the COVID-19 vaccine that he was supposed to give to other firefighters. And there were discrepancies on three different forms. And he first told Cologne, hey, I need that paperwork. And then when it came in, it was messed up. I mean, there was misspellings. There was no date of birth. There was just total, total confusion on these three forms. So the battalion chief gets back with the paramedic again. This all is begins at sometime after January the 6th when the paramedic Cologne was issued the vaccinations to, to give to the firefighters. And still with the battalion chief's frustration, he recognized the name of one of the three people. So he called him up on the phone and he said, hey man, he said, we're trying to get this paperwork straight. Uh, can you give me your date of birth? He said, for what? He said, well, for the vaccination. He goes, I didn't get a vaccination. I'm no longer a firefighter. I did, he said, you didn't fill out this paperwork and we didn't, uh, paramedic didn't give you a vaccination? He says, not at all. So that's when we were notified. We started this investigation and that's what we learned, that Joshua Cologne, who's 31 years of age, and in fact he was the 2020 Firefighter of the Year was giving three vials with about 10 doses in each vial and his job was to go to the different firefighters who requested the vaccination as a first responder and administer the dosage. 
we found that the paperwork was totally messed up as the bat chief discovered and ultimately we met Mr. Colon in the office of his lawyer and he said hey I want to totally cooperate I have embarrassed the fire service and I falsified the paperwork I used two false names a Scott Keller and Scott Keller does not exist and I also used an Alexander Demmer, D-I-M-E-R, which is similar but not, which is similar to but not a firefighter that he knows. So he didn't use Alexander the firefighter as his victim, but he made up a name similar to that in order to fool the system. So he even went so far as to dummy up some email addresses to email from Scott Keller back to the bat chief saying, hey, I've, I've got my stuff. He confessed. He said, I made all that up. I made up the one real victim and I made up the other two names. I made up the email stuff that I sent. It was all fraudulent. It was wrong. We go, why would you do that? He said, well, he said there's this captain, and I give you the captain's name because he's under criminal investigation. He would be arrested today, but he's on his way back from out west. He will be arrested upon his arrival here. There's a captain at the fire department called Tony DeAmano. And Tony supposedly went to Joshua Cologne and said, you know, I'd like some vaccine for my mother. And Joshua Cologne said, rebuffed him, said, no, I, I can't do that. So he made several requests of this vaccine from the paramedic. And the captain was told, I can't do that. So what occurred was there were three syringes with three doses of the vaccine that Joshua Cologne put in a plastic bag, put in a special refrigerator, and sealed it. And then, at the direction of the captain, he took a break. So he left, take a break, and when he came back, voila, the seal's broken, and the vaccinations are gone. Cologne says, I didn't see who had them, who took them, but there was a reckoning day, because back, voila, the seal's broken, and the vaccine. So he left, take a break, and when he came back, voila, the seal's broken, and the vaccinations are gone. Cologne says, I didn't see who had them, who took them, but there was a reckoning day because he has to have paperwork for every dosage, and now there's three doses for which he has no paperwork, and that's why he made up the stories and the false documents that he did. So we are not sure about Cologne's story, so we said, well, why don't you get the captain on the phone? So they get Captain Tony Diamano on the phone, and he's saying, hey, I need those vaccinations back. He says, I'm in trouble administratively. I need them. So they're having this conversation, and he said, well, I'm out west, but the vaccinations are in my car at a friend's house, and the friend lives in St. Cloud. Now, the friend and her husband and this Captain DeAmano are on this National Disaster Medical System response team. They have all been deployed out to California to help with the COVID disasters out there. We arrive in St. Cloud at the friend's house. Her name's Kim. She goes, hey, I just received text to say, and she was not at home at the time. She says, I, I, took, I went home, I took the vaccines out of the trunk of the car, put them on the front seat because this Joshua Cologne supposed to come get them. So we get text messages between the 
captain and his friend Kim and she go of course she doesn't know anything about anything she is just a totally innocent victim but she is taking these three these three uh, doses of COVID out of the trunk of the car and put them on the front seat we arrive the Osceola County Sheriff's Office was fantastic they helped us we had got a search warrant we recovered two doses we still don't know where the one syringe and the one dose is but we recovered two doses but interesting enough even though that Captain Deamano said it in jest ha ha he said maybe you want to or uh, wipe the fingerprints off of the off of the bag that's what he told Kim so keep in mind we've given you a a highlight of a detailed text and conversations that have gone on between these period all of these people during this period of time but the bottom line is Joshua tried to cover for the captain Joshua set up the circumstance for the vaccines to have been stolen had Joshua simply gone to his boss right then he'd have been the hero but instead he started falsifying paperwork making up people who didn't exist to cover it up he went to jail for a litany of charges just as soon as the captain arrives back from the west coast supposedly he stopped in Las Vegas and is driving an RV back is supposed to be back sometime tonight we will talk with him either late tonight or in the morning he might as well go ahead and turn himself in you can run but you can't hide the deal's over you're going to jail Captain Diamano for being a crook for stealing you're also going to jail because you abused your authority we take this sacred trust very serious our firefighters are our heroes they save lives they run in when all others are running out we're very proud of them but there's always going to be one that occasionally does something wrong and they're going to be held accountable when it goes from a disciplinary issue to a criminal issue then we're going to get involved and put them in jail and that's what we did on this particular occasion I only have one question for them what were you thinking did you That's only there he is. There he is. have three brain cells? I mean, <laughs> how's that going to work? Hi, Mom. I got this shot. <laughs> oh, do I give it to you now or do I wait two weeks while it sets in a car? See, I like him because I, I feel like I have the same sort of, I don't know what you call it, like sarcastic um, humor even though you're serious. You know what I mean? Like, a, I don't know. In an airport parking lot. I, I mean, none of it makes any sense. It's crazy. But there's going to be criminal accountability, and I'll turn it over to Fire Chief Weech. Once again, Chief, I uh, commend your team. Your internal you controls saw something was wrong and drew attention to that, and that's why we we were able to do what we did, and to guarantee the validity of the checks and balance system that you have at the fire fire department. We appreciate that, so Chief. <coughs> Thank you, Sheriff. I'm uh, Polk County Fire Rescue Fire Fire Chief Robert Weech. And I mean, what they should do is try to figure out who the shots were supposed to go to, and if any of those people catch COVID in a certain amount of time where they would have been protected, they should, he should get extra charges for that. Because it's kind of weird. It's like you're withholding what should have been medicine for people that are highly at risk that have to be in, in contact with people all the time. I mean, that's just so ridiculous. You know, why not just tell your mom where she lives, like my mom, every, you know, eh, responsible people, like older, elderly people have been staying home this whole time, okay? That's all you had to do, is tell her to do that. And everything would have been fine. And like the sheriff said, uh, we were going through routine paperwork as we do with every vaccine. You know, we have a responsibility to uphold the, the community trust. And uh, we found an, uh, 
one of these opportunities. We did not do that. We take that very seriously. Certainly not indicative of what we do at Polk County Fire Rescue or in the fire rescue industry. We had some discrepancies in the paperwork we couldn't explain or get to Thanks, the bottom lady. of. We uh, contacted the authorities and that's why we're here today. Uh, um, again, it's, uh, it's a matter of public trust. We take that seriously and uh, we, we thought we had a reportable issue. Turns out we did and uh, we went through the proper channels. Um, and uh, that's all the statement I have. You have any, any questions, questions for me? What's their employment status right now? Uh, Mr. Colon has resigned as of yesterday, and uh, Captain Damiano is still a, a employee in good standing, although that may change here very soon. Of course. It's not disappointing for something like this to occur. It's absolutely disappointing from, from my perspective. Not only were we responsible for withholding public trust, but we had a special duty, and that was to deliver the vaccine to the first responders that are out there helping right. the public. And right. so um, to have any discrepancy is certainly something we take seriously and we want to look into. But uh, something of this magnitude where inappropriate allocation, falsifying documents, um, getting others involved in it, certainly we're, we're, we're deeply disappointed in that. Definitely not what we're mean as a fire rescue department polk county fire rescue but um deeply disappointed but also why three vials you know i mean it's bad regardless but i mean you know if you take took one vial that has 10 doses in it yeah you, you know and all you need to do is give your mom two shots over a certain amount of time i don't know what the hell you were thinking you know it's almost like you wonder if he was doing something else with that selling each shot for uh, a ton of money okay uh, I mean and you probably could I bet you could sell you know 200 bucks a shot to some people that really want it you know what I mean so you could get six thousand dollars out of that thing is this a new task for Joshua did he not know he was gonna have to do paperwork or could there be more missing this was not a new task it had been completed successfully in, in the past by Joshua um, without incident um, this was the first reported incident first we and only that we know about we, we don't anticipate any others was not a new task he did understand the task and obviously he uh, he willfully um, you know falsified those records are the vaccines still viable I mean they sat in a car for some period. they are not they are not viable What's first name? Anthony. How surprised were you, Chief? Because I, I Googled Mr. Colon and I think the sheriff said he was 2020 Firefighter of the Year. He was recognized last month for his involvement with the pandemic. Um, yeah, this was something that didn't meet his character. So when yeah, the, he was like the, the firefighter was brought the, to me um, of the month or whatever. Certainly, <laughs> I, I was trying to reconcile it for myself. Um, I made a couple phone calls that were on some of the paperwork. Uh, I made some attempts to, to get to the bottom of it myself. Obviously, I couldn't do that. So faced with the facts, I had to go to the, to the authorities. Josh Cologne was, was, was a trusted employee. He was paramedic of the year just recently. We honored his accomplishments. He worked very, very hard. I consider this to be out of character for him, but of a serious discrepancy. And uh, I, I would, um, I'm confident in saying he made uh, some, some severe mistakes. So Cologne really didn't get any benefit out of this, right? Well, it's not going to play, but Sherlock Hemlock says something nice. He says, Chief Grady is very much like you, Grady. Intelligent, conscientious, at times merciless, <laughs> and very funny. Yeah, I mean, I mean I'm just saying, uh, you know, I appreciate the comment. But there's things that um, he does that it reminds me of when I watch some of the funnier times that I have on there. When I sort of restate the obvious type of stuff, you know. I don't know, but that's. I think I like him because I feel like a, a, a kin. Even though know, he's the he's obviously the OG, right? He's older than I am. All right, he was doing with his supervisor ordering. It's not imperative. to me. And he has been a you know he's serving the people, right? He's, that's amazing. Me that uh, he benefited at all. In the press release, to some kind of blackmail potentially that the captain was going to say, "Oh, thanks, I'm Kit Kat." Say, Thank you, Kit Kat. You stole the, the vaccines or something, right? I'm not aware of those details. Maybe the sheriff is. Three doses were stolen, but he said that he needed it for his parents. No, not doses. So three vials. Mom, dad, and who else? I'm not aware. Don't know. That's not correct. Is there going to be any changes now with the checks and balances of the issue of we the checks and balances the controls in place we identified this person so we feel confident that any first future discrepancies will be caught I we're actually pretty confident and pretty pretty happy that 
what was in place was something that uh, identified these these issues and these mistakes. So we're not planning any changes, but we'll definitely take a harder look at, at these things as, as we move forward. Can you speak at all to the captain and what his background was? Excuse me? Can you speak to the captain and his background with the department? Uh, captain Damiano has been employed with Polk County Fire Rescue for 17 years and he's been a captain for 14 of those years and he's assigned to special operations. Sheriff, what charges could the captain face? <laughs> Well, I'm here. I don't know if you guys can hear me, but uh, yeah, I had that same damn thing. I got I'm, I feel like uh, right after the show, I'm going to install that new driver. Hopefully that makes a difference. You know, maybe that's what it fixes, but uh, I can't, uh, can't control it. It's just Adobe Premiere. Something's going on. Maybe I'll, let me shut down Google Earth for now. And then what I'll do is um, I'll just open up Adobe Premiere. Yeah. It's weird how people leave so quickly. You know, it's like there's 54 people. Oh, I got it. I even though before the show, I said, well, just wait two minutes. I'll be back on. They're just so antsy to get the hell out. You know, it's unbelievable. Uh, let's see. Because I'm on the same stream. Okay, it's not a new stream. There's nothing new. Hold on, got to set up a whole bunch of crap. I just hit the stream button first, just to be on. All right. I wanted to get to the end of that. So he let the other guy talk, and then he came back on. It's right there. He's he is going to face charges of theft, Thanks, official Rosa. misconduct. And during his 17 years, at, at one period of time, he was a reserve deputy with us. So he clearly and unequivocally understands the law and knows he violated the law. This is Joshua. This is the face of a guy who gave up his public trust when he falsified reports. And we'll have a picture to go right here of Damiano just as soon as we arrest him and take him into custody and we'll present that to you later. But at the end of the day, they knew better and they violated the rules and the checks and balances in the systems were in place. That's why they got caught and why they did what they did is just absolutely beyond us. Any other questions on that? I got a couple of other topics if you want me to go over them. Why I'm here. No, ready? it's the same show. You didn't have to leave and come back in. It was just going to clock until I get the stream connected again. You do not have to come back in, okay? That's the truth. All right, I know how it works. You literally do not have to. You could sit there and sit there, and then, then I'll come back on in a little bit, all right? Okay. This is Mateo Penagos. He's 18 years of age. He's a student at Lake Nona High School. Oh, is this and here's else? what occurred. Oh, another one. On July the <laughs> 22nd, he falsified some paperwork and he rented a short term rental and had a house party. Yeah, you don't have to refresh. It just makes it in your mind you think that's what happens. The same stream is running, it's not stopped. Okay, the same stream is running. And um, what the hell's going on? Hmm. On that night, and then I just reconnect back to the stream. Okay, so it looks like it's not working, but 
It doesn't. As refreshing we didn't do anything. There, kids were fleeing from the house party. A Ryan Collum, who was 16, was charged with hit and run, hit and run, where he ran into a white female who was 16 as she fled the scene, and he drug her 450 feet underneath his car. We reported on that at the time. Our detectives did an investigation to see who was responsible for the house party. And this is the guy that was responsible for the house party. So we've charged him with burglary, criminal use of an identification, open house party, and there was like $2,503,000 damage to the house. There's a word of caution here. These companies that rent these houses need to check out these folks. This is a kid. We're, we're fortunate that our, that our female that was drugged 450 feet underneath a, a car being driven by another 16-year-old wow. fleeing a house party is alive One and a half today. football fields. But she's still in significantly serious condition and is, as I understand, still awaiting even more surgeries after a July 22nd event. It was a horrible night for these children and this guy is locked up for his efforts. He currently lives in Orlando. Ladies and gentlemen, there's got to be accountability when you do what he did. And then of course, you know, there's some things you just can't make up. Kevin Wheeler is 45. This is a totally different event. Let me take you back to the th three friends who had gone fishing on Friday night in Frostproof, and they were viciously oh, yeah. murdered. Uh -huh. yeah. One of those victims was Damian Tillman. He was laid to rest in a grave in Fort Meade. There were solar lights placed at his grave by his family. And a worthless individual stole those lights. Well, Mr. and Mrs. Tillman were outraged, as, wa as was That's everyone crazy. else that knew of this. Hey, thanks, Mac. But they went a step further. They installed a game camera that downloaded text and put more solar lights up. And guess who returned to the scene of the crime? Kevin Wheeler. To steal more solar lights. Only this time, there's a game camera the game camera hits, <laughs> and guess what? Yeah. We have caught us a thieving animal on the game camera. They notified the sheriff's office. We immediately responded and arrested Kevin Wheeler with more stolen lights from Damien Tillman's grave. And he said, hey, I just like to steal the lights. They were kind of neat. I thought they were cool, so I stole them off of a dead young man's grave who was viciously murdered. Now, he has a history. When he was in the military, they court-martialed him for a bomb threat, so he's no rookie to crime. But this is the lowest of the low of the low. And I applaud the Tillmans for putting up a game camera and catching a real animal. He's locked up in the county jail for theft. Put him in a body bag! So there's not enough negative things to say about him. He doesn't even deserve a what are you thinking because he obviously doesn't have anything to think with. He has no conscience to go steal from anybody's grave a place that is supposed to be very reverent is a cemetery where we honor those that have passed for whatever reason. And then, then this thing here steals from the victim of a homicide. So you know this guy right here is really low on the you know um, evolutionary scale. The guy on the right there, very very close to um, a Homo sapien Neanderthalensis. Uh, he's got the He's even got the sagittal crest on top of his head, where it point the point up there, uh, denoting strong jaw bones for crunching nuts. It's a grave sight. 
So I certainly hope that he chooses for a jury trial because I know what the jurors in Polk County will have to say about him stealing. Oh, he confessed too. It's nice of him. We had pictures. Any questions? Okay, God bless you. See you next time. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Great job. The legend. All right. Yeah, I, I wish you could clone him and put him in every city, or every state, I mean, in the, uh, and, and every county, you know, you know, like if he could have 5,000 twins. All right. All right, now we're going to do the Ohio cases. One of them, I don't know how much I'll talk about the one because we just talked about it not too long ago for the second time. Because it was one of the ones that identifinders identified. Yeah, he does. He, ha he did have. He has the sagittal crest, much like an orangutan, where there's a point at the top of your head uh, for strong jaw muscles that reach all the way up there for uh, crunching on uh, berries and nuts. Yeah, so I actually had a couple, like a whole bunch of these cases, but then I, um, I'll do those tomorrow. There's a Melanie Cooley, Mark Melick, uh, Melick, Melick, Peter Joseph Becky, uh, Amy Diceman. But it turns out where I got, let me turn down the music. I got sidetracked on one, and then it led to, there's four unsolved cases. And uh, one of them was the Blatnik case, uh, but with that one is solved. So now there's three of them, but who knows if that killer hadn't killed some of the others, right? Although her case is the one of, is the outlier of the four, okay? But it's just mentioned in the article. So I'm going to start off with the first one, which is sort of like the parent case of this. And I think there's a picture of her. That's her right there. Janice Christensen. There's other, there's tons of pictures of her out there. Well, not tons, but variants. Let's put it that way. All right, is everything working? Everybody can hear everything now? Can't wait to install that driver. They just got a new one. I'm thinking that might help the issue there. Either that or it was an update to Adobe Premiere that has a conflict. All right, so this is uh, the event. Ha uh, she went missing on August 10th, 1987. All right, and this article is from August 12th, and it says the body of a Cuyahoga Falls woman. Apparently, hold on. Let me let me turn it down. Make sure this is. There we go. Apparently stabbed to death while jogging in an Akron Metropolitan Park in Hudson Township, was found by her husband Tuesday morning in a brushy area alongside a trail. Officials believe the victim may have been sexually assaulted before she was killed. The partially clothed body of Janice Christensen, 31, of Quick Road, was found by her husband, Kenneth, at about 6.30 a.m. in the underbrush off the park's hike and bike trail where Miss Christensen often, uh, often jogged with her dog, uh, which I guess his name is, well, it says Dog Wolf. So I guess the dog's name is Wolf. 
The secluded trail is east of Ohio 8 and south of Streetsboro Road. So let's see where... Uh, secluded trail. Well, actually, I have a map coming up here in a minute. I'll just read th get through this one. And let's see. The secluded trail is east of Ohio 8 and south of Streetboro Road, about a quarter mile north of Barlow Road. Well, I guess we could try to do it. Let me open I'll do the map now. I like to have it in my head while we're, the look of it while we're talking about it. Okay, so this is in Barlow Road, Ohio. I think it was in, was it Hudson? I don't think that's going to be it. <clears throat> Barlow Road in Cuyahoga Falls. Ah, well, that's the same one. Okay, so now we see that. Since now that we have that on the map, we can open up the one that looks like a, it's a map here. That's just the 303. I'm not even sure if I'm in the right spot. Let's see, highway. Just hoping this would be easy. How about Terex Road? That'll, I'm sure there's only one of those. There we go. Okay, that's close. So is this Terex Road right there? This oh yeah, that's Terex Road. And then it goes like that and then up. So now I, I see this right here. So that means and everything looks the same now. And I think this is the bike and hike trail that I'm looking at right here, as a matter of fact. And then it goes across just like they have it. Okay, so it says she was found probably like right in here. I'm just doing this all on the show, the map part of it. I've got all the documents. Or the, the not the documents, the newspaper articles. So Janice was found. Yeah, the way they have it, it looks like it's halfway between you know, if it's possible, let's go back in time and see if the rest of that... Yeah, so there was nothing there at the time. So I, I think it's a little bit farther back, like here. It's just now it's not that anymore. The trail, though, it looks like that's been the same. You can still see the trail, but they have it about halfway between where it cuts across and this area right here. You know, it's hard to know how accurate that is, you know. But there it is. Let's see if there's any street view randomly down there. So there's a little bit right there. So this is probably where that shot is taken, blocking the road somewhere. You know, maybe down there. Let's see. If, let's see that picture. A minute, there's another picture right here of the trail that's blocked off. You can definitely see that's kind of a similar look to it. I don't know if it does it curve right there. But you gotta know that it's been populated with homes since then. Let's see what it looks like right here. I think that might be it. Right here. See, this is where, yep. <laughs> Look at that right there. See, it's just a little bit, the, the shot is zoomed in a little bit. But I think that's got to be it. Look at the telephone poles and everything. 
they're just keeping everybody from going down that trail. That's what that, that's what that uh, no trespassing sign is. So it's somewhere down there. These homes weren't there at the time. Okay. I get so we found that. And we open up that article again. All right, the secluded trail is uh, east of Ohio 8 and south of Streetboro Road, about a quarter mile north of Barlow Road. All right, so here's Barlow Road. Let's see how close that is. A quarter mile from Barlow Road. So that'd be about right here. So we had about, it was pretty close. It's gonna be like right there. Officials are not sure whether the dog was with Miss Christensen when she went jogging in the park Monday morning, but a Cuyahoga Falls police detective said he saw a large dog was running in the area while he was at the park investigating the crime. Mrs. Christensen was reported missing by her husband at 5.45 p.m. Monday after he returned home from work. Cuyahoga Falls Police Detective Gary Moss said police were able to account for Mrs. Christensen's whereabouts until 9.30 a.m. Monday when she failed to show up for an appointment. Falls Police are aiding in the investigation because Mrs. Christensen lived in that city. Her car and orange 1983 Toyota Tercel with license plate number 866NBY, which she drove to the park Monday morning, could not be found. Hmm. A Summit County coroner spokesman said late Tuesday that an autopsy showed that Mrs. Christensen died of multiple stab wounds. The spokesman said further, uh, let's see, I don't have the second page. I don't think I could find that. Let me, let me make sure. Hold on a second. That's on the uh, August 12th, August 12th, 1987, Ohio, and Janice Christensen. By the way, I sent this case over to Colleen because it's in the same general area. <laughs> And in one of these articles, believe it or not, it mentions DNA being found. Isn't that crazy? I mean, it literally said, I mean, 1987, they were looking at the person's DNA that was left behind. That's just right at the beginning of when they were using that. All right, so it's saying on page 10, A10, 8, there it is. Okay, so here's the next part of it. Let me uh, grab it. <clears throat> Janice B. Christensen. I think they must have been one of the first people to be using it. that it said uh, the spokesman said further tests were needed to determine whether she had been raped but the scene would suggest she was sexually assaulted he said her clothing was in disarray police were unable to identify assorted footprints found around the body Christensen reached uh, at his home Tuesday afternoon declined to comment so that's the husband a little bit fishy that you know there's this huge dog that doesn't seem to have defended anybody and 
the husband finds her out on this random trail. I mean, I knew he was going to be, she was going to be there and everything, but you know, it's just kind of suspicious, unfortunately for him. Neighbors describe Miss Christensen as a friendly person who was enthusiastic about her physical fitness. She was a lovely young woman, said Edna Urbank. A neighbor, Miss, U Miss Urbank and her husband John, said the Christensen had lived next door to them for about seven years. Mrs. Urbank described Mrs. Christensen as a body-conscious person who worked out just about every day. See, this is, to me, um, you know, not to bring up Delphi again. That's just one that we're all familiar with. But, you know, she's jogging on this trail. And, you know, it doesn't seem like it's, it's the husband based on, you know, later articles and everything. I don't, I don't know. I'm not sure. But let's say it's not the husband. It's got that same thing where he, the person knows that people are show up there. You know, you're going to have women jogging alone on a trail like this like it, it's just a it's just really obvious i mean look at this thing you know you just hide down on the side somewhere and, and remember before there was no homes back there so you have somebody jogging and they're just waiting out there waiting to pounce like uh they're gonna they, they run into their trap you know all this all of these homes were not there during that time. So again, I'll go back to, oops, I just turned on the daylight. I'll go back to 1994. Look what it looked like. Now, this road wasn't even there. This wasn't there. So you, what you could kind of picture is somebody just sort of hiding, waiting, attacking, and then leaving out, and maybe maybe they had their car in a, in a certain spot, killed, then got out of there really quickly, you sort of wonder if other joggers may have seen anything. Huh? What happened? Thanks, Elza. What, uh, what makes your heart uh, proud? Man, you guys say some weird shit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's more like 87 cents or something. But hey, you know, it's the same percentage. Um, yeah, all somebody would have to do is wait out there, and somebody runs by, you attack, and then you leave. It's absolutely isolated. Nothing. And this is even seven years after that. See? Yeah. <laughs> oh man, you guys are you guys are crazy. Oh man. Uh, Mrs. Let me get a drink here. Water. Miss <sighs> Urbank described Miss Christensen as a body conscious person who worked out just about every day. Miss Christensen also would regularly help Urbank, Urbank unload hay to feed his cows and horses. The Christensen's had no children, neighbors said. Miss Christensen was employed at Cuyahoga Falls General Hospital. A spokeswoman at the hospital said Miss Christensen held a non-nursing position but could provide no further details of her employment. Another neighbor knew Miss Christensen simply as pleasant woman who had always who would always wave if she jogged by. The neighbor, an elderly woman, who asked not to be identified, said that Miss Christensen's death uh, was her, uh, has her worried because so many undesirables are starting to come, ba uh, come around here because of the parks, the Metro Parks and the Cuyahoga Valley National Recreation Area. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, the, the hunting zone. In addition to falls, police Hudson Township police and rangers in the Akron Metropolitan Park System are investigating the death. Okay. 
So this is a pretty big, you know, it's a big page, not a lot of information on it, but it's got a map. Again, shows you where, I'm not sure why they need to, you know, have the whole page to show the whole parking, the whole park system when you're just kind of showing where she was. It was an unlikely setting for a brutal crime. Late morning on a summer day, a park trail in the country, and the victim was just engaging in a favorite activity. But when Janice Christensen went jogging sometime after 9 a.m. on August 10th, she never returned home. Her husband found her body the next day. She had been sexually assaulted and stabbed in the chest five times. The murder had at, um, has added the scent of fear to the crisp autumn. Let's see, so she, she had been sexually assaulted and she was stabbed five times. She's an uh, absolute monster. The murder has added the scent of fear to the crisp autumn air and the patchwork of parks that stretch from just north of Akron to Cleveland, Cleveland's southern suburbs. By early fall, the crime was still unsolved, leaving park visitors and area residents with nagging questions. Are the parks safe? Could the crime happen again? Well, of course it can, until you catch the guy. Unlike what Toby Lesenby said. Oh, everything's fine, everything. That guy, the killer, is still out there somewhere, says Stanley Christensen. Janice's father-in-law, I want some justice, but I'm just concerned about the population. There's a guy out there that shouldn't be. Dan Coleman, 29, is a ranger in the Cuyahoga Valley National Recreation Area, the largest of the parks in the area. He was hired to help preserve and protect the natural wonders of the area to conduct guided walks, lectures, and campfire programs. Anyways, that was all they had on that. Huge page, however. All right, so this is this article. That last one was in November, so about three months after the crime, and then this one's another month and a week later. Thank you, Dottio Caspian Horses Rock. The fear that gripped Akron Wednesday could be heard in the voices of the people calling the YWCA Rape Crisis Center. Area residents re, uh, reacted to the killing of Marsha K. This is another individual, Piotr. By making more than 70 calls to the center, most of them seeking advice on safety, according to Director Terry Heckman. On a normal day, the center will get eight to 10 calls. They feel vulnerable and they feel like it could be me next. One man called the center to ask what kind of gun he could buy for his wife. Miss Heckman said, she and volunteers at the center do not offer suggestions about weapons. The fear also could be seen on the face of the women who were found in the car containing the body of Mrs. Uh, let's see, the fear could be seen on the face of the women who found the car containing the body of Mrs. Piotr. Not really sure how to pronounce that. But. No woman is safe going anywhere in Akron, said the 32-year-old West Akron woman who discovered the 1987 Oldsmobile Cutlass in a parking lot off North Pershing Avenue in Northwest Akron late Tuesday night. Now we've ta we've had Pershing show up before. I know we have. I guess we'll see when I get there. There'll be some pins. Akron police have been reluctant to make comparisons in the death of Miss Piotr, 36, and two recent victims of rape slangs Joanne Bartholomew, 47, of Stowe, and Janice Christensen, 31, of Cuyahoga Falls. But there were similarities in nearly all the calls that were made to the Rape Crisis Center. The calls were from people, she said, who were concerned about relatives who lived near where Mrs. Piotr's body was found and near St. Martha's Church on East Talmadge Avenue the last place she was seen alive Monday night. All right, so I'm going to I think what I'll do is let me I'm going to go to this story here that just mentions a little bit about 
the case again. It says, Chief Assistant Prosecutor Fred Zook said the county has used the test at least once, talking about DNA tests, before in the case of 31-year-old Janice Christensen, the Hudson woman who was raped and stabbed to death on a jogging trail August 10th. He declined to reveal the results of the test. So let's see. <coughs> DNA is extracted from semen, blood, or tissue sample and chemically divided into fragments. The fragments form a pattern that is unique to every person except identical twins, according to Cox. Investigators would use the identity profile for a comparison with profiles taken from suspects. Essentially, I mean, this is 1987, man. They're, they were way ahead of everybody. Essentially, it is considered as accurate as fingerprints. It's an almost absolute match. 99.99999% accurate, said Ivan Balas, Director of Clinical Services. Conventional blood, semen, and tissue analysis is only a fraction as accurate. Right. And so they did have a DNA profile in this case, so I, I sent it over to Colleen, and I gave her, I tried to find the, um, you know, the, the agency that's uh, handling it. But I told her, you know, you know, probably the best thing to do would be to call the, the people that you work for on the Blatnik case and say, hey, I've stumbled upon this. Do you need any help on this case? Because that's already a connection and a case that you were solved and it worked. And they'd be probably really pumped to send you over there. So that's what I suggested. Let's see, an individual analysis costs less than a thousand. <laughs> that's hilarious that they're, I mean, that's 40 years ago and they're talking about that. Well, not 40, but 33. <clears throat> All right, so in 1997, you see this little string Every 10 years or so, they bring these up, right? So look, Janice Christensen right here, Joanne Bartholomew, Marcia K. Piotr, and Barbara Blatnick. This one is, was solved like in the last couple years. Barbara Blatnick. These three aren't. Now look at the difference here. It actually has a breakdown on here. See right here, Janice Christensen stabbed repeatedly in the chest. Joanne Bartholomew stabbed repeatedly in the chest and sexually assaulted. These two here, only two months apart, very similar. Then you have Marcia K. Piotr stabbed repeatedly in the neck and upper chest, not sexually assaulted. So maybe that one was robbery, but it was December, you know, just a, about t two months again after that one. And then this one, Barbara Blatnick, strangled, sexually assaulted, possibly by more than one person. Yeah, so that one has a different M.O. there. You know, she was strangled and sexually assaulted. Not, uh, you know, she wasn't stabbed in the chest. These three are very similar here. So what I'm going to do right now is that I'm going to Bounce over to Joanne. Actually, the next one I'll go over to is Marcia K. Piotr. There's a couple of articles on that one. See how? Let's try. See if we can find some similarities on that. The body of a 36-year-old West Akron woman who had been reported missing early Tuesday was found shortly before midnight Tuesday in her car in West Akron. Police said Marcia K. Piotr was found in her car, a four-door 1987 Oldsmobile Cutlass, which was parked on, let's see, and this is in Akron, Pershing Avenue. I don't know, let's see. No, West Akron. Pershing. Hmm. 
North Pershing Avenue. Just north. There we go. So, you know, it's not even flying that far away. It's right, it's just very close. You know, all of these are in a very condensed area. Okay, so it said on Pershing. And then off of West Market Street. So let's see where that is. Let me put a pin and get on to her right there. Actually, Bartholomew was before this, but I'll just do this one first. North Pershing. Hey, thanks, Alley Cat. Yeah, well, I appreciate you uh, appreciating it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, our, you know, the sort of the biggest goal of what we do is at the end of each month we donate to charities, you know. That may, that's what absolutely makes a difference. This makes a difference, too, because people might, you know, they hear about a case that really hasn't been covered in a long time or ever sometimes. And so that's good. You know, all these cases deserve to be talked about. I know the other one that I uh, was looking at earlier has a ton of files. I don't know how repetitive it got, but uh, we'll definitely go over that one tomorrow. Okay, so the intersection was... Market Street, I guess. So the next one will be Market Street. Okay. So that means that's going to be going like this. It's got to be that, right? Wait, no, this is Pershing right here. Okay, there you go. So her car was found either right here or right there. You know, I don't, I don't know. No, that's no, it's this one because north starts right here. So we'll say right here, something like that. Okay, somewhere in that area. All right. Two corners investigators were on the scene, but no other details were available. Miss. Piotr Piotr was last seen about 10.30 p.m. Monday getting into her car in the parking lot after she had played bingo at the St. Martha's Catholic Church. Okay, and that's at 300 East Talmadge. And I'm sure the church is probably still there. Looks probably like it. That's hard to say. And this is the Saint Martha's Catholic Church. Okay, and that was at, uh, what was that, 10.30? 10.30 p.m. All right. So Miss Potter, Pot Piotr was last seen about 10.30 p.m. Monday getting into her car in the parking lot after she had played bingo at the St. Martha's Catholic Church at 300 East Talmadge Avenue. Ah, look at that. They got the Google Earth drove into the parking lot. Or whatever the hell this is. <laughs> it looked like a parking lot. St. Martha, yeah, so it's St. Martha's Manor now, I guess. Uh, she was reported missing at 4.30 a.m. Tuesday when her husband Larry woke up to go to work. 
and found that she had not come home. Earlier in a phone interview, Piotr said, we're praying she's going to come home. That's the husband. It's not like, it's not like her. She's not the type of person who would just leave or run off. We have a loving family. I just hope she's healthy. Uh, Piotr said he and his wife have been married just over five years. The couple has two daughters, 16 and 11, from previous marriages. A St. Martha spokesman said Miss Piotr was not a member of the church. Bingo games are held at the church from 7 to 10 p.m. every Monday and Friday and are open to the public. During the search for Miss Piotr, police were making no connections between her disappearance and three other area women who were raped or raped and murdered in the past seven months. According to Akron Detective Captain Jerry Foy's the body of Stowe resident Joanne Bartholomew, 47, was found October 24th near Chapel Hill Mall. Her purse and credit cards were found later in Patterson Park in North Hill. The body of Janice Christensen, 31, of Cuyahoga Falls was found August 10th along the path she was running in the Summit Metropolitan Park's bike and hike trail in Hudson Township. Both women were stabbed and sexually assaulted. A 17-year-old girl was raped May 27th at Hampton Hills Park in Cuyahoga Falls. Piotr said police told him there appeared to be no connection between his wife's disappearance and the uh, Bartholomew case. Well, how, you know, that was, it sounds like that was prior to her being found. Akron police said Wednesday that the robbery may have been the motive in the slaying of 36-year-old Marcia K. Piotr of West Akron. Her stabbed body was found in her car near a West Side apartment complex. The robbery leads... I thought they said her car was found earlier. Hold on, I'm confused. Last seen, been reported missing early Tuesday, was found shortly before midnight Tuesday in her car in West Akron. Was found in her car, which was parked on North Pershing Avenue off West Market Street. Okay. I'm just going to see if, you know, I think something might pop up on the screen that looks similar. Her stab body was found in her car near a West Side apartment complex. The robbery leads police to speculate that the homicide is probably not linked. Okay, let's see. They have Pershing. There it is. They actually have the, on the map, they have it going up right here, and then she was found, like, right there. I wonder if that's changed. Let's see. Go back to, uh, some years. That's 94. I wonder if it's one of these right there. on the left side because those, those look like apartments right and maybe they just but there's brick on them so anyways the robbery leads police to speculate that the homicide is probably not linked with the unsolved rapes of two Akron area women yeah that's the thing those other two women Bartholomew and Christians uh, yeah Christensen 
they have a, almost the identical MOs all the way through. This one has the stabbing in the neck and chest, but not the sexual assault. So they think maybe that the motive was robbery in this one. Ms. Potier's body was found about six blocks from her Bernendo Avenue home by two residents of 58 North Pershing Avenue. A five unit, okay, let's see where that is. 58 Pershing. Yeah, it was that, that one right there. <laughs> yeah, where'd I go? I just went, I just flew through the earth right there. Uh, 58 Pershing Avenue, a five unit, two story apartment building about two tenths of a mile north of Market Street on the west side of the street. Yep. The Summit County Coroner's Office performed an autopsy on Mrs. Piotr Wednesday evening but declined to release the results. Captain Jerry Foyce, Foyce of the Akron Detective Bureau said Miss Piotr was found fully dressed lying on the seat of her 1987 Oldsmobile Cutlass still wearing her glasses which were askew on her face. There was blood on the floor of the car, Foy said. It appears there was a struggle in the car. You know, I, you don't know if he wasn't trying to sexually assault her. And after he killed her, he just grabbed her purse anyways. He said miscellaneous items were scattered in the car, including her purse. Her money was missing. Robbery may have been a motive. Coroner's investigators said Wednesday they don't know if Miss Piotr was sexually assaulted and declined to give the specific cause of her death. Uh, Bob Brinkley, chief investigator for Summit. Let me go to the next one. County, Coroner William. Uh, God, they just started reading off more shit. I thought I was going to say a county. Summit County Coroner William Cox said the coroner wants to review the final results and then will decide that information to release. Mrs. Piotr's body was found about 11.30 p.m. Tuesday in her car after her husband Larry reported her missing early Tuesday. She had played bingo the night before at St. Martha's Church at 300 East Talmadge Avenue. Church officials said Wednesday that uh, Mrs. Piotr had not won any money at bingo that night. Mrs. Piotr worked at a receptionist for an Akron dentist, Dr. Lawrence Kay, who was in the process of moving from Cedar Street to Bowery Street. Office manager Millie Pesich said Wednesday, Mrs. Uh, Piotr was a warm, giving, jovial person. Uh, Miss Pesich said she knows that Mrs. Piotr would not willingly let a stranger into her car we used to talk about what if situation since the Joanne Bartholomew murder. Wow. That must be a creepy, I mean, just makes it even worse, you know. Like you're already sort of freaked out in your town about a killer, and then you become a victim of a killer. Like you're, you're just like, are you kidding me? You know, just absolutely, you know, scared out of your mind at that point. I think it makes it even worse. On Tuesday, Akron police alerted the media that Mrs. Piotr was missing. Police found her body that night after two West Akron residents reported seeing Miss Piotr's car with the license plate Lorenzo. One resident, a 32-year-old woman, told the Beacon, Hey, if we get another 140 of those, uh, Lee D will be on a, on a normal night trajectory. Tonight's been a... Uh, if I could do a sound effect, it would sound like this. I just don't have one. <laughs> oh, man. It's, it's weird how some nights are just like... Let me open this sucker up.
Hmm. I guess there's no audio, no sound effects tonight. Yeah, that's the sound effect. It sounds like this. That one. If I could do the Pac-Man sound effect, it, that would be it. There we go. Uh, she said the rear view mirror was askew. We're seeing Ms. Powder's car with the license plate. One resident, a 32-year-old woman, told the Beacon Journal there was blood everywhere in the car. He said the rear view mirror, yeah, I mean, she probably got hit in an artery. Uh, it was askew and the glove box w was open. She said it looked like there were papers scattered in the car. And she said she saw something in the front seat but did not want to know what it was. She had been curious since about 4.30 that morning when she said she heard a car pull in and I saw the taillights. I heard a car door shut. I thought I heard two shut. She said she figured whoever pulled in had gone into one of the apartments. She said the silver cutlass was still there when she got back from work Tuesday evening. About 11 p.m. while watching the television news, she heard the story about the missing woman. The woman knew Larry Piotr through business contacts and wondered if the missing woman was his wife. Then she heard the license plate letters. I quickly started a phone. Uh, uh, I quickly started to phone the police, she said. My first thought was I prayed to God that she was not in the car. Foy said there are more differences than similarities in the slang of Miss Piotr uh, compared to the unsolved killing of Mrs. Bartholomew. He noted that Mrs. Piotr's body was found in an open area, although discreetly hidden. And Mrs. Bartholomew was in a wooded area. Let's see. Although discreetly hidden, and Mrs. Bartholomew's was in a wooded area. The voice said a knife was the murder weapon in both cases and no weapon has been found in either case. Foy's who would not discuss any links with a third unsolved death in the area, the August 10th killing of Janice Christensen of Cuyahoga Falls, saying it is not an Akron case. That's close. The 31-year-old was attacked while jogging along a portion of the Akron Metropolitan Park districts. A uh, bike and hike trail. Yeah. Police investigate woman's death. Body found near Blossom. A body was discovered Sunday. According to police statement, the identity of the victim was not determined. Uh, police found the body of Marsha K. Piotr last Tuesday, sprawled along the seat. I think this might be, what day is this? The 21st? I think that is probably Blatnik. She was killed on the 20th. So I think that's who they're referring to in this one. So uh, again, she was last seen alive by her parents as she drove away from the St. Martha Catholic Church after playing bingo. Man, you just sort of wonder how that all went down in that one. That's just crazy. Okay, so Bartholomew. <coughs> and this is basically the one of the first articles on it. They're already thinking it's similar to Christensen. A death of a Stow woman whose body was found Saturday bears several similarities. Hey, thanks, Jessica Schubach. The death of, death of a Stow woman whose body was found Saturday bears several similarities to the case of a Cuyahoga Falls woman found slain two months ago, according to Summit County Prosecutor. Slabby said Sunday, that's his name is Lynn C. Slabby. Boy, what a, if I was a parent, I would just change my last name. 
if my last name was Slabby. Right? I mean, would you want to grow up? I mean, you would just be tortured. Every, oh, Slabby. I mean, you'd have to be in <laughs> really good shape of your entire time that you were... Because if you even come close to being chubby at all, that, they're going to throw that in your face. I don't even know. I've never even heard that before. Maybe it's pronounced Slabby, but there isn't a soul that would say... Read it that way. Um, Slavy said Sunday, several factors in the stabbing of Joanne Bartholomew, 47, whose nearly nude body was found near the Chapel Hill Mall in Akron, are similar to the August death of Janice B. Christensen. Mrs. Christensen was stabbed to death while jogging at the Akron Metro Parks in Hudson Township. The body of Bartholomew was lying face up about 25 feet. I think this one and Christensen have a very good chance of being related. Bartholomew was lying face up about 25 feet into a wooded section over an embankment behind Best Products Company, Incorporated, a discount dis department store at the Akron Mall. Hmm. The woman had been stabbed several times in the chest with a sharp object, said Doug Jenny. Jenny said some details, including whether the woman had been raped, would not be immediately available. No weapon was reported found. The woman's car was found Thursday parked near the mall. Let's see. Is it still there? an address here in a little bit behind best products I wonder if there's a best foods let's see or best is that what it's called or is it best buy Okay, let me move on to the next one. Three days later. Akron police said Wednesday they found additional personal items of slain Stowe resident Joanne Bartholomew Wednesday night, about three miles from where her body was discovered. Police said a jogger found the items near Temple Square. How ironic at North Main Street and East Cuyahoga. So let me just put that in there. So at least we have this one. North Main Street and East Cuyahoga Falls Avenue. Okay, there's North Main and Cuyahoga, Cuyahoga Falls Avenue. Okay, so those items of clothing were found around here. This is this one. Mary M. Leonard, 79. I always start getting like interested when there's another pin near another pin, you know, especially if it's like a suspect or something too, you know, and then there's clothing through thrown over here, and then there's a suspect that lived, you know, and it's. That was 1979, so it was only eight years prior. To North Main Street and East Cuyahoga Falls Avenue, police arrived at the site about 7.40 p.m. 
Tuesday after receiving a telephone call. Police said they found two cards. Mrs. Bartholomew. So here's another. Look at. <laughs> I don't think you can toss out that other case. The uh, Potier or Piotr, because in this case, somebody, you know, had their other items. You know, it looks like they had cr looked at a credit card, at least threw it out the window, whatever the hell they were doing with it. Maybe they wanted to get the address and see if she lived on her own and maybe go rob her home in the meantime. Who the hell knows, but I think it makes it have a better link to the, the other case at that point. Uh, police said the credit card enabled them to determine that she used the card to make a purchase at O'Neill's Chapel Hill Mall store. Uh, let's see, O'Neill's O'Neill's Chapel Hill Mall store on October 21st, the last night she was seen alive. The nearly nude body of Miss Bartholomew, 47, of Treeside Drive was found Saturday with multiple stab wounds. The body was lying face up in a wooded area behind a store near Chapel Hill. Let's see. There, there is Chapel Hill Mall. Okay. I bet it's that woods right there. The body lying face up in a wooded area behind a store near Chapel Hill. Tuesday the discovery represents the second set of personal items found by North Akron residents. On Monday morning, a tipster called police saying she had found credit cards belonging to Miss Bartholomew along a street near Patterson Park, about two miles from Chapel Hill. All right. Let's just put a pin in Patterson Park. Oh, weird. Yeah, so that's very close. Clothing, credit card. Unless they're still talking about that. Well, it's the same article. Found items near Temple Square and North Main Street. So Jogger found the items near Temple Square, at North Main Street and East Cuyahoga Falls Avenue. Okay, so that's Temple Square Park right there, a little tiny little thing, I guess. Police said they found two cards, Miss Bartholomew O'Neill's credit cards, and then it says the nearly nude body was found. Then it said, Today's discovery represents the second set of personal items found by North Akron residents. On Monday morning, a tipster called police saying she found credit cards belonging to Miss Bartholomew along a street near Patterson Park. Detectives who searched the Patterson Park area Monday also found Miss Bartholomew's purse. Oh, man. So that guy was just tossing stuff out. Thanks, Zozo! -zo. Police later... Police later that, uh, that day also received a knife that a 10-year-old boy had found in the Patterson Park area. Let's see where that is. Okay, so that's right next to... So a knife was found again, sort of in this area. Yeah. So that person was just... It almost seems like they were on foot. 
or something. I don't know. I mean, it, uh, <laughs> you're just kind of walking around, dumping items as you go, checking them out. But why would you have clothing, I guess? That, that part doesn't make a lot of sense. I think it was probably driving around, just tossing items around to throw people off. You know, he probably lived over in this area somewhere. You know, you dump clothing and sort of make it look like you're heading in this direction, but you weren't. And so here's the mall she was, uh, well, let's see. Actually, maybe it's over in this direction because in, it, her body's found right here. And then maybe as they're driving, it's like you dump stuff here, then you throw her clothes out over here. So the person might live, uh, you would think they would live over here because you wouldn't want to start throwing items out leading in the direction you would live. So you'd think that they might live over here. Because I think their body was found in a wooded area behind the mall. I bet you it's right in there. I would say right in there. Somewhere. Okay, police also um, are waiting on other test results expected to show whether Miss Bartholomew was sexually assaulted. Miss Bartholomew was last seen alive the evening of October 21st after she left the First Church of God in Talmadge. Yeah. Her husband Charles reported her missing to Stowe Police Thursday morning. He found her car Thursday afternoon parked near the Britain. Okay. Now we've got that one. So the person was driving around in her car, because remember it was missing, right? So the killer did have her car then. Thursday afternoon, and then it sounds like it wasn't too far away, though. Um, parked near the Britain Road main entrance drive. Oh, so maybe not. Could have been. It's just right here. But he could have driven it, and then just put it back. I don't know. Seems like you would need it to get somewhere. It's just so weird, some of these killings, you know. How to figure out exactly what the hell's going on. Let me get the, uh, so, the Britain Road. Okay, so the Britain Road entrance. So I bet you it was parked near, I bet you it's like right right here in the parking lot. You know, something like that. I don't know. We'll just say car found. See, because that's the Britain Road entrance into the mall. It could have been one earlier, like right there, too. You know. So there's that one. So, definitely, let's just put it this first one over here. So maybe it was in the, uh, this lot. But let's see if we go back in time. Is it still kind of... Yeah, not a lot of people in that one. This is 1994. Hudson Township Police. Okay, we're right down there. Stowe and Talmadge Police are assisting Akron Police in the probe because Miss Bartholomew was reported missing in snow and was seen in the Talmadge area that night. Hudson Township Police are also keeping up with the investigation because they are working on a similar unsolved murder, the August 10th stabbing death of jogger Janice Christensen of Cuyahoga Falls. 
Both women died of multiple stab wounds, both were found in wooded areas, and both bodies were partially nude. Police also are exploring any connections with a third case involving a 17-year-old Cuyahoga Falls girl who was raped in May in Hampton Hills Park in Cuyahoga Falls. Akron police have asked anyone with information concerning the murders to call a phone number that doesn't exist. Okay, now it's saying she was raped. Joanne Bartholomew, the slain... I mean, I hope they've compared... If they had a semen sample, they've compared her with the Christensen case. Joanne Bartholomew, the slain Stowe resident whose badly or body was found Saturday, had been raped, Summit County Coroner Dr. William A. Cox said Thursday night. We confirmed that she had been sexually assaulted. Miss Bartholomew's nearly nude body was found in a wooded area behind a store near Chapel Hill Mall. Technicians at the Ohio Bureau of Criminal Identification and Investigation in Richard, uh, Richfield were examining a knife that a 10-year-old boy found in the Patterson Park area of North Akron, where credit cards belonging to Miss Bartholomew also were found. On Tuesday, other items belonging to Mrs. Bartholomew and O'Neill's department store credit card and a verification card from a coupon entertainment book were found by a jogger near Temple Square at North Main Street and Cuyahoga Falls Avenue. Police said they were able to determine from the O'Neill credit card that Miss Bartholomew had made a purchase at O'Neill Chapel Hill Mall store the night of October 21st, the last night she was seen alive. Cox also has said he believes Miss Bartholomew was killed that night. She went to the mall after attending services at the First Church of God in Talmadge. Well, I thought she went there to play bingo. Miss Bartholomew's car was discovered. At no, that's a different case. <laughs> Shit, it's so similar. Miss Bartholomew's car was discovered at Chapel Hills Mall October 22nd, two days before her body was found. Police were investigating. Isn't that weird? It's weird now. You know, it was so similar to the last case because she was at a church too, right? That lady was at a church playing bingo. Then she's in her car and she's killed in her vehicle. And then this lady was at a church and then goes to a mall in her vehicle and then is killed. Hmm. That's interesting. Police are investigating to see if there is any link between Miss Bartholomew's killing and the unsolved murder of Janice Christensen. But I was talking about the, uh, the case of... Uh, Piotr. That's the one that was playing bingo, right? Hmm. All right, November. Police check drawing of two attackers. Akron police said Tuesday they are checking the composite sketch of a man wanted in connection with the September 30th attack on a 30-year-old salon woman to compare with the composite of a man wanted for the May rape of a Cuyahoga Falls 17-year-old. The, the Falls girl was raped at knife point along a secluded path. Hmm, that's interesting. <laughs> Same as the other ones. Secluded path in the Akron Metropolitan Park District. Police also investigate the possibility of any links those two cases might have with, with the August 10th killing of a 31-year-old Janice Christensen of Cuyahoga Falls and the killing of 47-year-old Joanne Bartholomew of Stowe, whose body was discovered on October 24th. In all the incidents, a knife was used by the assailant. 
Salon detective said a knife was recently... Man, they should ban knives, man. I tell you what. Those... There's just way too many irresponsible knives, uh, knife owners. I think we just need to start eating with, uh, you know, cut steak with your teeth. You know, just stick it in your mouth and rip it apart. I like eating that way, too. Salon detectives said a knife was recently found in the salon incident. Police said the woman was attacked between 8.30 and 9.30 a.m. on her way to work. She was driving to Bedford Heights when her pickup was struck from behind by the suspect's large pale yellow car. She told police she pulled off the road to inspect the damage, then went back to her vehicle to get her driver's license. It was then that she was grabbed from behind at knife point, police said, dragged into the woods, tied to a tree, partially disrobed, again, and sexually assaulted. Police said the woman was not raped. The man reportedly... Uh, told the woman he would return for her. Police said the woman managed to free herself and ran for help. Salon police, who said they, that's a little different MO, mailed the composite sketch in the September 30th inc incident to Akron police this week. Salon police described the suspect as a white male in his late 30s or early 40s, approximately 6 feet tall with medium build. The suspect has a bushy mustache and curly sandy colored hair and a long round face with a round dimple. Salon police said the suspect is believed to travel Bainbridge Road on a regular basis. So, that, I mean, they don't know if that's even related. But they're all, you know, assault, murder. That's the Christensen case. This one is the, uh, I think, Bartholomew. All right, and that the knife they found was determined not to be. Summit County Coroner William Cox has determined the three-inch blade pocket knife found in the Patterson Park area last month was not the weapon used in the October stabbing death of 47-year-old Stowe resident Joanne Bartholomew. Cox said Friday the blade size was not consistent with the multiple stab wounds of Mrs. Bartholomew's body when it was discovered October 24th. Yeah, you see what I'm talking about, though, everybody, on the show? When I do these long shows and I do all the research on them, and then when I talk about politics, everybody's so much more enthusiastic, you know, in the chat. <laughs> that's why I'm like, God, man, I should just be talking about politics, but that's not what I do. I'm doing true crime to raise funds for the, you know, so it's kind of a weird dichotomy. I think it's more entertaining for people for some reason. But it, I'm not, I'm here to to do what I'm doing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, some people do, but I always judge based on like, uh, you know, the super chats or how many people sign up for memberships and that kind of thing. And it seems like when a lot of times when I do these longer shows like this, it just doesn't work. It doesn't do whatever it is in people's minds and that's kind of what my you know my job is actually you know to raise the funds so that we can be still donating this next year at least the 22,000 I'd like to get to um, you know because last year it started off slower we it wasn't at as big a goal and then it got better and better and better and better right so at the end of the month we at the end of the year we got up to 22,000 but it seems like if we could do the, if I still could do 2,500 for the year, we would be at, I think that's 30, right? I mean, that's a ridiculous amount. That would be a cool number to shoot for every single year. And if we could do that, then I think we could build up to, uh, in the DNA research part of it up to about 15 and donate 15 to charity. And that would be awesome. So there you go. Yeah, I like politics, too. I'm just saying there's a huge difference, you know. And people, you know, hate... Some people hate the politics, so, you know. All 
No, I'm not going to give you a warning. Yeah. I mean, you guys notice the same thing, right? <laughs> I mean, it's not like it's... I'm not making it up. It's weird. So... Uh, so they don't know what weapon was used here. And we got an article on the 24th. Test shows black man likely killed still woman. So that's interesting. Hacker and police cat. Let's see why they're saying that. Maybe it's a. I don't. I didn't know they had DNA tests or anything like that back then. But let's see. Hacker and police captain Jerry Foy said Monday test results indicate a black male killed Stowe, a Stowe woman who was raped and stabbed to death one month ago. Foy said his conclusion is drawn from laboratory test results he received over the weekend from the Ohio Bureau of Criminal Identification and Investigation. The lab analysis of evidence submitted to BCI shows they are 99% sure a black male was involved. The nearly nude body of Joanne Bartholomew, 47, of Stowe was found October 24th in a wooded area behind a store near Chapel Hill Mall. She had been stabbed repeatedly and sexually assaulted, according to Summit County Coroner William A. Cox. Hmm. Huh. Okay, so that's, this is her, right? I mean, let me make sure. Yeah. That's who they're talking about. She had been stabbed repeatedly and sexually assaulted, according to Summit County Coroner William A. Cox. Foy said the lab tests eliminate any link between Miss Bartholomew's death and the May rape of 17-year-old Cuyahoga Falls girl. Foy's pointed out the assailant in that rape case is white, according to the description provided by the victim. She was raped at knife point along a secluded path in Akron. However, Akron police have not ruled out a link between Bartholomew's and Janice Christensen of Cuyahoga Falls. Miss Christensen, 31, was raped and stabbed to death on August 10th as she jogged along Akron Metropolitan Park District's bike and hike trail. Foy's announcement about the race of the suspect in the Bartholomew mur murder was a surprise to Summit County Prosecutor Lynn Slabby. Thank you, Dottie O. Caspi and Horses Rock. He said he was not in complete agreement with Foy's conclusion. I'm just not aware of any one piece of evidence that can indisputably exclude the possibility that the assailant could be a white male. Slabby added that there may have been evidence, you know, I'm a little bit suspect of that too. I mean, 1987, I'm not sure what kind of, they had that great of, um, you know, I'm not sure what kind of technology they had back then for that and how accurate it was compared to now. You know what I'm saying? Oh, and thanks, uh, Georgie, on PayPal there. Uh, let's see, what did I... Oh, by the way, just as an aside right now, this has nothing to do with what we were talking about. I just happen to remember. Remember I, I sent the NBA a letter, National Basketball Association, an email, and they said... Thank you for, and this is an actual letter back. It's not a form letter. I was kind of shocked. Thank you for contacting us with your suggestion about hosting frontline workers at NBA games. We have received similar, and I'm not saying frontline. I'm talking about vaccinated frontline workers. We have received similar suggestions on the topic from passionate fans like you, and you can be sure the league and teams are looking for ways to appropriately and safely recognize frontline workers at games. You may be interested to know that the Brooklyn Nets honored essential workers at their December 23rd season opener. Yeah, I think it's great that they honored them. I'm 
talking about going to the games for free, the ones that are vaccinated and have had both shots. Fan attendance this season is being determined on a market-by-market basis with all NBA teams following local protocols and safety guidelines. You can find updated details on the markets that are following. I've actually seen games with people at the games. You know, like they're in Texas, you see people sitting up in the crowd and they're, you know, maybe two people here, two people there, you know, spread out. Thank you again for taking the time to write and for being a fan of the NBA. Yeah, that was pretty cool that they, somebody actually typed out a response. It wasn't a form letter. So, anyways. uh, Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if I trust this. Could be. You know, they said it's 99% sure, but this is 1987. You know. Police search for a missing Akron woman. Is this another one? Oh, yeah. This, so this is the article that pointed to Marcia Piotr. I just took her out of order. So... It was at the end of this one. So this is when she was just missing. And then, you know, I don't, I don't think Blatnik is actually related to this, but she was one that also was killed just a few days later, and then her case was solved uh, a few days after uh, Piotr. Let's see. Barbara Blatnik. Let's see if that guy. So there's the guy. You know, it's interesting because that person looks. Let me find that last case again. Hold on a second. There it is. Yeah, I could definitely see, like, you know, this guy, you know, I mean, you know, they're just sketches, but, you know, this guy being this guy before, right? (laughs) I mean, it's just, you know, this guy probably lost all of his hair over the years, maybe even the guy on the right. Who the hell knows? But that's the one that killed uh, Blatnik, psycho. She was strangled though she wasn't stabbed to death so anyways you guys I don't think I have much more I had some more cases from let me see if any of these are short okay I'll do this one Melanie Cooley This one, though, is in Colorado. It's not in Ohio. So, women dies of head injuries. Totally cold case. No information, hardly. A Jefferson County coroner report issued Thursday said an 18-year-old Nederland woman whose body was found last Friday died of massive head injuries from blows with a blunt object. The report said Melanie Cooley had been dead for about two weeks when her body was found near Coal Creek Canyon. This is one that uh, I believe they think Bundy had something to do with. Detectives said a large rock was found nearby and may have been the weapon used in the attack. The young woman had been reported missing April 15th when she failed to return home from school. 1975. And she died of blows to the head. The report said Melanie Cooley had been dead for about two weeks. Detectives said a large rock was found nearby. The young woman had been reported missing April 15th. Basically the same. And this is the November article. And it, it mentions her name in here. Bundy was charged with attempted murder and kidnapping a few days later. And remains in jail bond set at a hundred thousand dollars so this is like right when he is captured but they're linking different cases Uh, she's mentioned in here 
It was just something I was looking at. Creepola. Anyways, I'll just make this a shorter show. I don't think I'm going to... I'll just... I'll look for more information on that one if I want to talk about it. But I appreciate everybody showing up tonight. You know, we we got a show in. We talked about those crazy cases. I think those two are definitely related. I think that uh, Christensen and Bartholomew have a good chance of being related. Don't you think? I do. So... Let's see. <laughs> yeah, I don't have the my sound effects aren't going to be working. So I'll just do it normally. Thank you to Mandy Seebeck. You became, upgraded your membership. Don't forget to do that for those of you who can afford it. Lee D, Timothy Cecil, Lee D, Sherlock Hemlock, Kit Kat, Zozo, Mag, Mandy Scott, Zozo, Dottie O'Caspi, Norse's Rock, Linda Howe, Lee D, Alley Cat, Gene Fish, Lee D, LM, as an element open. Jessica Shoebox, Zozo, Lee D, and Daudio, Caspi, and Horse, uh, Horse is Rock. And another one by Daudio, uh, <laughs> Caspi, and Horse is Rock right at the end there. I'm pretty tired, actually. I uh, bought some for my eyes. I think uh, Julie W. told me about these this ointment stuff, but... It kind of made my eyes get sort of red, you know, so. I'm, gonna, I'm trying the Refresh PM. Okay, so that those Refresh eye drops, they have a PM version. That's kind of an ointment. And so I'm going to try that, see what happens. So I appreciate all of you guys coming here, supporting the channel. Uh... What else? What else is going on? Besides hypocrisy. Now I actually just need whatever works, you know. Everybody says this and that and the other thing that doesn't work. Yeah, I'm going to try the refresh. My brother, the, uh, he's a doctor, he said to try Refresh PM. It even says for extreme dry eyes. So we'll see. Yeah, one of these days. It's hard to take a holiday because you get so far behind on the goal. You know, like at the end of the month, I won't be able to donate as much. If I, I am taking, I am going to be taking my annual golf trip though and that's coming up it's in February so I might not be doing a show for three straight days can you believe it maybe just two but and I might do an early one you know I might be able to sneak in like if I do an early show on Friday somehow and then Sunday night do one. You know, just late. Might be able to do it. I know it'll be nice to do something else. Yeah, I've tried those allergy eye drops. They don't work on for me at all. I think they might work if you have an allergy and that's why your eyes are dry. But I don't know if that's what I have. Oh, and thank you to uh, Stacy for uh, PayPal earlier. Really nice one. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. You know, the other case I was looking at, let me just show you. I'll show you who it is. This Mark Mellick guy. I had a lot of, a lot of files throughout the years. Pretty amazing. 
I don't know how much new information shows up, so it might get really uh, repetitive, but, you know, there's articles all the way from 1985 to 2017. Well, hey, I have withdrawals from, you know, having, you know, seeing all of you guys every single night, too, right? <clears throat> now, it feels weird. When I'm not doing a show, it feels strange, you know? Like I sit over there, and I'm if I'm watching TV or something, I'm thinking, God, I got to be doing a show. I'm okay if I have already done one, like some of those earlier shows. Yep. All right, everybody. Thank you guys for hanging out, and make sure you wear your mask. Maintain your social distancing and wash your hands. All right. So that's it for tonight. And let me, let me show you. What do you guys think? Don't you guys like my swinging? Oh, you can't see it. Hold on. <laughs> Jesus. Look at that. There it is. The swinging sign. Even though I look crazy, I have to fix the. There. Do you like the, the swinging sign that I put up there? No trespassing. We're tired of hiding the bodies. Okay. Anyways, good night, everybody. Thank you very much. And be safe out there. And a two, and a three, and a... Yeah, I've been doing this true crime thing for quite a while now. And during this whole time, I have not seen one person that is a crime dissector, perpetrator. I'm a certified human lie detector. Gonna get you on a stretcher if you try and play me like an old projector. Crime sector is my nectar. Professor Gray is gonna give another lecture. Crime collector, freak connector. I, bet I do that, not you. Pop protector, fool deflector, interceptor. And I'm meaner than a specter with a vector On his pector with all respect ya Just remember I've attempted for conjecture I have no agenda I'm a pretender And I'll serve it to you straight without the blender And in the end I'm gonna send ya On a mission to reveal the true offender Yeah, so I'll just get right back to work Alright everybody, talk to you Alright man, that was the greatest show in the history of mankind Oh jeez Oh, yeah, yeah. It was okay. Yeah, well, I, I was trying to encourage him. Well, thanks, Mary Lou. That's very kind of you. Well, I was just kidding. I, I don't give a shit. <laughs> You're so mean. Good. <laughs> no, please, I won't cry, everybody. I won't cry. All right, everybody. Be safe out there. Yeah, that damn Mary Lou. Yeah.
Sleep. What the hell are you doing? I was just wondering if anybody was there. Gee. God, what a lunatic. 